Good morning, you lovely lot. Happy Friday. Tim Wilde's Ascension update. Middle of April, almost. And uh, we're on the other side of the eclipse. And uh, what a funky, amazing wave of energy came through. And uh, I'll be absolutely honest with you, it, it, it did kind of like eclipse me slightly, pass me by. And um, because I was working all weekend in Hamburg, big hello to you, lovely lot, because it was so it was so beautiful. And um, where, as I was travelling back, that was the time of the eclipse. So the effects, or the energies, or the general kind of over overall kind of. Um, event itself did pass me by slightly. What I have seen though is the <clears throat> incredible kind of fervour or intensity of the energies or the focus that have been around the actual event and I know I touched on it whilst I recorded last Friday in Hamburg about how um, there are all of these different kind of opinions about what the eclipse actually was. I've, I've, I heard like quite a few really decent ones about how it's a shift of timeline. It's an opportunity to walk through a gateway. I have, to, I have to be completely honest here. The majority of the either positive or the negative effects of an event of this proportion are down to the creative powers of us on the receiving end of the energies. So there was a mixed bag, as is the entire planet at the moment, a mixed bag. And um, some people were overwhelmingly positive about it, even about the kind of the, the physical effects, the quantity of light that we, we received. And there was other people that were naturally thinking that the, well, or naturally or unnaturally, were thinking that the serpent was going to eat the sun. And, the whole of life as we know it was going to finish you know very much like it's done many times before or even I've heard theories or speculations about the fact that there wasn't an eclipse at all and it was an eclipse simulation <laughs> that was my favorite at the moment the simulation of the eclipse or just the fact that we are kind of overall living in a simulation or a projected version of our reality. And there's elements of truth in that, I suppose. What, I, want, I want to look a little bit this morning at the, almost the explosiveness of what we would consider to be <coughs> conspiracy theories or the energy behind conspiracies or the general vibration of it. Now, I, I can remember clearly having a conversation with Diana Cooper back in 2014, when, you know, the, the, the mud, the, the pond was beginning to be stirred a bit with the stick, the clear water began to like fill up with mud as the vibrations came in, the frequency of the planet began to rise, people began to wake up. And um, and I spoke about this in, in the event on Sunday. I regard the wake-up process to have come in stages dependent on soul, soul contracts and um, also the rising frequency. So there was a huge quantity of us that were awake prior to the cosmic moment in 2012. A lot of us got kicked out of bed at the harmonic convergence in 1987 when when um, the, the, the Atlantean energies and the rays and the, the kind of like the, the more Christed aspects began to return to Earth in preparation for what is going on now. And the, the, the wake up process was kind of long and a little bit more kind of at our leisure. We'd wake up when we were designated to. Some of us have been awake all of our lives to a degree and kind of at complete loggerheads with the environment that we live in. Like take myself, for example, I was born incredibly psychic and sensitive and used to be 
you know, witnessing all of these things around me in the world but that I couldn't speak about. I couldn't speak about it to my school friends. There were no adults really that would have the faintest idea what I was talking about. The only backup that I had were the fact that my parents were open-minded. They were into the transcendental meditation scene. So they were very much more, that's nice, darling. You know, um, may, may, maybe don't go into that room if it's scaring you. That, that, that was just, they didn't shut me down, which I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for. And my mother used to talk about how she remembers a previous life of being a witch. So I always had that advantage, and I believe it was an advantage when I, when I, was, when I was a wee lad. And, um, but for others born in 2-3D, they were shut down immediately. And if you're listening to me and this is resonating with you, that you were sensitive, but you were not allowed to express this. This has very much been the theme that has run through the third dimension and fear has shut us down. The lack of ability to speak our words or to speak our truths for fear of punishment has been a massive thing during the third dimension and of course all of the all of that has changed now so that was the first wave of wake-ups the the um you know the forebearers though those that that kind of carried the torch early and we had lots of time the way showers we had lots of time to kind of find what we were interested in you know the the leisurely collecting of crystals the interest in healing, Reiki, all of the other kind of concepts and modalities that came out and also the information that was available via. I was always very drawn to Dr. Joshua David Stone's work who um, Joshua David Stone has returned as one of my guides and has been seen on regular occasions kind of like dropping into my events as a blue light and of course there was Diana Cooper who is, is still serving the planet to this very day at the, the, at the highest level. And um, so they provided me with the information that I needed to fuel my ascension fire. But it was a lonely path and there were very few other people who I could connect to. And that was how we used to be. That was how the our personal spiritual pathways, apart from when we found like-minded gatherings and workshops and and groups to apply ourselves to. And then from 2012 onwards, everything changed, everything. The planet switched in frequency overnight and the sentinel soul groups began to wake up again by soul contract, by choice, but also created by the rising frequencies that have been going up every day since the cosmic moment. So if you're listening to this, you'll probably, you, you might well fall into that category. You might go, I woke up immediately, maybe on the day of the cosmic moment or, or afterwards in 2013, 14, 15, or you might be listening to this and you've been woken up really recently, probably by the changing events of the planet around us and how we are experiencing and witnessing our world in a, in a, in a very, very different light now. So the Sentinels ha have had, again, a, a more limited period of time to find their feet, but they found their feet very quickly. These people are born to serve. You are born to serve. If you're listening to this, you are, you are here to serve the Ascension process, to serve the planet, but also the working for the application and the anchoring of your higher self, your mighty I am presence. So the, the concept of the fifth dimension is to serve from the heart. You are in service to the universe, to the divine, and there's, there's, no, there's no other what, real way to describe it. You are an explorer from whatever part of the cosmos who's agreed and signed up to transform what was originally a very third dimensional school into a almost like a concept lifetime or incarnation where we bring all of the ascension frequencies into the physical body and shine very brightly very much in the way that the Sirius constellation moved through the the 
ascension process, all of those beautiful kind of stars and planets, they went through the same process that we did, but they did it over a much longer period of time, 300 years. We decided to do it in 20, <laughs> which I, I, I find incredible, the fact that we are doing this in 20 years and we are not just doing it in 20 years, we're ahead of schedule. So more recently we have the in like, you know, it's almost like an espresso, an espresso version of a wake up. One minute you're asleep and the next minute you're awake. And a lot of these people are souls that we've had around us that we've been looking at for years thinking, you are never going to wake up. You know, like, I love you, but you're very, very sleepy. You're not talking my language. I, I, I cannot kind of get in, I cannot get across to you. And a lot of these people may have been quite hostile and aggressive towards us, particularly in the last four years when things have been going on that have drawn very, very strong lines in the sand as to where people's consciousness actually lies. Now, from particularly this last four to six years have been born an abundance of conspiracy theories. But as we all know, the difference between a conspiracy theory and a conspiracy fact is usually about six months. So that saying is, is there's a huge amount of kind of overall cosmic worldly truth in it that a lot of the things or a percentage of the things that people get very fired up and very worried about and very, very, very angry, you know, like it's out of my control. It's the, the overlords are doing this, they're doing that. And it's a huge focus. It's a huge focus. It's a huge part of people's conscious life and intention. And that is more of a phenomenon of the recent times, particularly since 2020. And we know, as we are sat here, receiving these vibrations, witnessing the eclipses, participating in the equinoxes, the lion's gates, the full moons, the new moons, that there is, that everything that is occurring is happening for a purpose, a higher purpose. So what would be the purpose of injecting half-truths or, or triggering information into the bandwidth of receptivity that we have? And I've always said that the best or the most effective way to control a populace or to keep the vibration of a populace low is to keep them in fear. So I believe that we have to be very careful with what we would regard as conspiracy theories or conspiracy facts, whatever which way you want to call it. And digressing back to where I, I, I was going earlier on, Diana Cooper received very specific information from her guide, Lord Kumaka, years ago, not to get involved with the energy surrounding these circumstances and these situations. Many of us have been accused of being too fluffy, too head in the clouds, ignoring reality, not being grounded by not being drawn into the energy of these situations or not emotionally engaging with them. But there's also a very important reason why. So my the way I sit on the fence with this, Libra Moon, um, is to be informed Okay, now I'm not going to sit here and say that I haven't had things that have triggered my survival buttons in many cases, particularly in the last four years. In fact, these survival buttons of mine have been pressed continuously since 2008, since I realised why I was on this pathway and what I was here to actually do. Because when you are told in advance that there are going to be vast changes on this planet, the, con the, the, the conscious mind wants to know why, what, when, and, and, all of the con and all of the context and all of the details so that we, you know, like, we can keep ourselves safe or I could keep myself safe or, and, and everybody around me. And the reality of the shift that we are embarking on, that we're going through, is that we are given very little information about the pathway that lies ahead. 
And that's for a specific reason. It's so that we can create as we go along. Because we are doing this in such a short space of time, because it is a work in progress, it's a painting that we are painting as we're going along. We are the creators, we are steering and guiding the entire pathway. We're anchoring the vibrations in, we're going through the changes, the metamorphosis, the movement of 3D from, to 5D from fear to the heart, but the creation of what we are doing is literally in the palms of our hands. So the whole point of these incredible and quite overwhelming quantity of, of actions of 3D plus the conspiracy theories and the knowledge of them on top of it creates a whole different pool of, of it creates a different timeline altogether. It creates a timeline that is very much in alignment with the book 1984. Now, I, I personally believe that was written by somebody who wanted to see the timeline ahead of the game. So there's all of these beings that have known pretty much as we do that this is going to happen at this time. And there's going to be an inevitable global awakening, regardless of all of the efforts that are put into it. So they have been trying very for a long, long time to steer it in a direction where they maintain even a modicum of control at the other end of it. And all of that is going down the pan as well. What we have seen is the collapse of the astral recently, and it's going on as we speak, as you listen to me speaking now. There'll be layers that are being taken down, slowly but surely. And the information that came through around Christmas time via both Diana Cooper and I, no, neither of us had talked about this previously, was that that turns the magic tap off to the to the kind of the control matrix. So they no longer have that oomph, that backup, that access to all of this, this kind of tomfoolery that they've had previously. So they've switched now to finding it from another source and they're getting desperate. So we are being bombarded by events right down to like our local towns and villages and cities and individual countries. Everywhere you go at the moment you have the opportunity to be triggered, to be knocked off your pedestal, to be knocked out of the heart into the old kind of red coloured base survival energies. And it's going to be down to our will, our intention and our steadfast kind of point of focus in order not to be drawn into that on a regular basis, to create from a point of heart-centred wishes. So I've always said, be informed, know what is occurring. You know, to not know what's occurring is, it, it, you know, it's fine if you live on the top of a mountain and nothing else is bothering you, but most of us are still, <laughs> we are all participating in this, in, this, in this group, this event. So we kind of need to know what's happening, but to look at it and to participate and to create from a higher perspective. If we are being cons continuously drawn into the, the angry pockets of, of information, which most of them are, they have a percentage of truth, but they also have a percentage of preceding, which, are, which is put in place by people with big platforms. They're very popular. Everybody listens to them. They, they, they have a, an ability to talk from the side of the light, when in actual fact, they are not necessarily carrying all of that light they are there for a purpose okay so again this is now going to be down to your discernment my discernment and the discernment of everybody around us to be exceptionally clear and focused on what we are creating the third eye has lost its sixth veil there's one more to go okay when that veil comes away when that final veil comes away you are going to get your wishes to see and to feel and to sense and to perceive the, the hidden world around us. Are you ready 
okay? Because at the moment you are being shown everything that wasn't being available previously and a lot of people are finding that incredibly overwhelming. It is becoming a little bit too much to deal with. Sensory overload. So step back, find your peace in nature. This is why I've been doing this for four years, to make sense of these changes and to create from a point of love rather than fear. I've made absolutely sure that I am connected to the vibration of Mother Earth, that my feet have been on the ground, regardless of what I am anchoring, whatever, whatever frequencies or vibrations I'm holding that I'm using, that I have the ability to just bring that through me and to recenter if I need to. And there's going to be lots and lots of opportunities to do that. April has always been the the month. Okay, this is the month that everyone was talking about. Everybody was feeling was going to be incredibly intense and they were not wrong. But again, how much of that has been a preceding? How much of that has been, oh, April is going to be off the charts. So therefore, we allocate that month to be off the charts. Peace is our choice. Peace is our option if we choose to engage within it. And it is something which we are going to be required to wholeheartedly engage in, to anchor the rest of the world as it wobbles, as it sways, as the wind blows through what was third dimensional and transforms it into fifth. Okay, so that's all from me this morning. I am going to upload this now with love from my heart to yours and see you on Sunday night if you're joining me for the for the Ascension the Ascension Club Sunday night Ascension Club it's the third episode and I'm looking at the chakras the Ascension chakras all 15 of them working through them clearing balancing it's going to be a really beautiful harmonizing space and then in the not too distant future I'm going to be traveling off to Sweden with my lovely friends Lavisa Alptorn and Anna Indra Larsen for a live event in Orebro. So if you haven't heard or seen that and you're in the area, get it in the diary because it's going to be wonderful. Love you all. Bye for now. See you soon.